Hi right, hey everyone, this is Joel Cleaver from Jim's and I'm out on the day on the road with Matt Thorpe who's the local Jim's mining franchisee. We're out in Cheltenham here and we're at his first job. It's around 9am, so we appreciate you doing this, Matt. No Just worries. a little quick intro you were telling me before about what did you do prior to starting Jim's mining franchise business? All right, well my business is uh, Jim's Mowing Hampton Bayside and uh, I bought that uh, in August last year, so I've been doing it just over a little 12 months. Um, and in that time, uh, I have um, I've built up to a client base of just over 90. Prior to doing that, I was a policeman for 19 years. Prior to being a policeman, I actually, I did uh, 12 months um, labouring uh, as a landscaper. Um, and had the opportunity then to go into become an apprentice uh, landscaper, um, but at that stage I was geared towards being a copper. Um, but yeah, as I say, after 19 years and on days like this, um, you just don't look back. So how many how many regular clients do you roughly have in your round? Um, uh, around 90. Around 90 at the moment. Yep. Wow. Yep. Is it just you doing it at the moment, or? Yeah, yep. I do have a couple of part timers that I can call on when um, the period gets busy, such as we're about to enter into in the spring summer. Um, but for the most part, it's uh, just myself. And can you tell everyone for a home watching, maybe just what's an average day look for you? I know we're starting a bit later today, but what does an average day normally look for you? Um, it just depends on if I want to have a sleep in, but uh, <laughs> realistically, I'm usually on the road at my first job by about eight in the morning. Um, and uh, I will map out the day um, as to the best and most economical way of, of servicing the clients, rather than going from, say, Cheltenham to Balaclava, where I've got a couple of clients out there. I'll just work it in as to um, the best way uh, and the most economical way I can just get from A to B. Um, and I'll just go from job to job to job and usually finish up, depending on the, the day, around 4.30, 5 o'clock. And overall, how are you just enjoying it? How are you enjoying the day? I love it. love it. Um, I love getting in the car, just knowing that um, whilst I am a people person, I think there's a lot to be said to just being out in, in your own space and just enjoying your own time. Do you want to get into your first job? First or? job? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Cool. No worries. Um, so we're just going to do a nature strip here. Um, I've got Des here working with me. Yep. Des is the regional <laughs> franchise law. Well, we didn't want to be on camera, but he's on there now, so that's all right. I do the, the body corporate nature strip. Um, I also do, but we're not doing today, but I do this property here. This right. is Irene's front lawn. Yep. Um, now, can you name every customer? Do you know their first name, every one of them? 100%. Yeah. Yep. I think it's really important that you've got a personal contact yep. and relationship with those customers. And this, I do this, I maintain this body corporate, so all the hedging and pruning along here. Um, not doing any of this today, this is on a, so. I, you, but you would do this sometimes, but, yeah. So I do this on a quarterly, uh, quarterly schedule. Quarterly basis, yeah. Yep. So you come back here quite regularly during the year? Or yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. Here. So they're done probably every two months. Yep. Um, here's every three months. Um, Irene's back there, she's every 21 days. And this is every 28 days, just the nature strips out the front. Um, I herbicide the, the garden and then um, just blow out the car park. Great. So what are we doing today? What are you doing today? We're doing that. So okay, cool. What do you want to do, Des? <laughs> you <laughs> 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 want me to do that? All right. <laughs> I can tell you now that the, they, uh, one thing Des taught me and um, they teach you on the six day course is edges first, Yep. then mow, then, then you clean up, then you blow, right. blow off your... Um, so edges first, right? Yeah, edges <laughs> first. <laughs> if you've got a bit of leaf matter, or yep. it's a bit messy, you'll do a blow before you mow, so you can vacuum it up. But it's just efficient to do your edges and then mow, then a blow. It's uh, yeah, an okay. efficient process. It looks terrific. No idea. <laughs> so how'd yeah. you find driving, drive, I know it's a silly question, but how'd you find driving the trail? No, a lot of people it, don't do it. It's, and, um, it's not a silly question yeah. because, um, as I was saying earlier, a lot of the guys that I spoke to prior to buying a business, um, one of the guys said, uh, I don't do jobs in courts because I'm not comfortable to drive down a dead end street wow. and then try and get out with a trailer. So that can, to some extent, limit your business. Yeah. Um, so there were times early on where I got myself in bits of pickle that you'd sit there and frustrated about how I'm gonna get out of a tight squeeze. But in the end, I'm comfortable enough to be able to reverse this down a street, do a three point turn, reverse in and out, go into courts, no problems. Just took a bit of practice and experience and Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. I mean, look, you have gotta have a little bit of confidence about you, but at the same time, you just gotta have a bit of 
patience and yep. and take care. So my toolbox is something to fill out there. Got to yep. be careful of uh, <laughs> yeah tool. So I carry pretty much everything that I think I might need for a day. Yep. Um, and even if I don't, I've got it there just in case there's the odd, oh, can you quickly do this for me? Um, last thing you want to do is get to a job, get asked for that little bit of extra work, and then go, I actually don't have that with me. I'm going to have to come back, which that client might turn around and go, look, don't worry about it. Yep. You might have done yourself out of a few extra dollars, or you put yourself under pressure to try and get it done later on in the week. So. I just carry my hedge trimmer, my uh, pole extension, which comes with my uh, pole saw and the uh, extended hedge trimmer. I've got my blower and snipper. Uh, I do have a second snipper um, for when the weather gets uh, warmer and I've got that extra guy working with me, yep. which will sit, sit here across the top. Um, I tend not to, I was carrying the snipper on top from job to job, um, but in the end I've just found it doesn't save that much time to take it out of here. Yep. What I do do at the very end of my first job is my blower that will sit in the mower cage on top right. of my mower. Yep. So when I pull out the mower, there's the blower and then I just get the, the snipper from there. Great. Um, I've got a toolbox with a handy set of little tools, Allen keys, um, pliers, hammer, just things you might need to help you tighten up your tools or at a little job. Yep. Um, little pruning saw, secateurs, gloves, mower bags, uh, and just some garden tools, loppers, shears. Um, oh, excuse me. No, it's me old man. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll let that go through to the keeper. Um, and yeah, just uh, yeah, um, clean out the gutters, gutter little tools. See a little bit of everything there. Hand tools, yeah. So how'd you go about selecting the gear? I, I, I knew you, I was thinking you said you bought, you bought a, did you buy a splitter or was it a resale did you buy? I bought a yeah, resale. Resale, yep. yep. So with yep. The, did it come with a bit of gear or you have to? He had some um, equipment which I did buy second hand. So yep. I bought a, a snipper from him. Right. Um, and I bought a backpack blower. The multi-tool is his. Yep. So the pole saw and the, um, the extended hedge trimmer. Uh, I bought a brand new snipper. The, um, this hedge trimmer here, that was bought brand new. Yep. Uh, the mower was new. Um, so how to go about selecting them? I got a lot of advice from my franchise or Des. Yep. For a commercial style business, you know, you're not your, you're not your home handyman. So you, you know, you go to your mower store, and it was, it wasn't so much that Bunnings don't sell great equipment. It was, go and start having that early relationship with your mower guy. Yep. Um, you know, buy from them. They're real specialists, right? Yeah. yeah. Buy from them because they will look after you. It's their equipment that they've sold you. They'll look after you that little bit more yep. when you come back. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so I've got the, the Honda uh, self-propelled mower. Another key piece of advice was uh, get yourself a self-propelled mower. Right. Uh, now what's the difference? What's the difference types? I've got no idea. So what's the different types? Well, self-propelled? So self-propelled, yep. this will, once engaged, take off. Right. Um, as long as you've got that engaged. And self-propelled, it's not, you have to push No, it so then. it's not a push mower. Oh, okay, I get you. Um, but pros and cons, which I've uh, since learned, um, it is heavier. So some guys who don't run a trailer and might just run out of the back of the ute, yep. invariably won't have a self-propel because the deck is a lot harder, uh, sorry, heavier, and the engine's a lot heavier, um, and that lifting just doesn't happen for me. No problems, because I'm on the mower ramp and Great. In, into the cage. But yeah, so that's, that's my schedule. And then I've just got a few cheat notes that I, that I keep with myself. Oh, awesome. So I've got some mowing notes, some work tips. Uh, these are all things that I've learned over the 18 months. Uh, mostly on that six-day course and then networking. Uh, a few little informations about the, again, the herbicides, pesticides, the weed, weed chart. And um, yeah, I just sort of, what I will do now, having just completed the course, I'll look to um, uh, expand to a little folder and then have that carry on with me. Just talking a bit about the edging process you go through. Yeah, look, I, I know that some blokes um, We'll just try and hurry it along because the quicker you get the edging done, the next year on the blower, uh, sorry, the mower, then the blower, and your job's done. I always think, just as Dead said, it's a really important thing. Even if it's just somebody coming down the street, you know, always know when a lawn's just been mowed. You don't always know if the edges have been done if it's been a bad job. So, look, that's not a bad edge. There is a little bit of crookedness there, but it's um, it's all about going. Oh, yeah, the edges are done. The lawn's been done. Looks really good. So, if you look at that versus that. Yeah, it's um, a massive difference. You know? yeah, yeah. And even as I said to Des, I, I do just this little bit here because, okay, that's 
technically that's the neighbour's yep. front. But if you're the client coming home, and if you had this overgrown yeah. on, on this part of your driveway, yeah. it's not a good look. But even though it's not, yeah, even, as you said, even though it's not really your responsibility, you yeah, still do it anyway. Just go that little bit extra. Yeah. So let's say, say here, Matt, obviously you come here, you do a great job here. So early on, obviously, if you're building up around again, obviously you, you bought one. What about the, the marketing sort of techniques you would use maybe in this area? Okay, so I would talk about maintaining their hedges. So it was actually my idea about a, um, a quarterly service for this uh, property. Um, they did say to me, how often do you think it would need do doing? Um, the very first time I quoted it, I knew that the very first time I was doing it, it I would lose money on that particular day because um, of the time it was gonna take. So what you see now isn't necessarily what it was like the yep. very first time. Um, so I, I factored that into my quoting process. I said, okay, yep, it's gonna take me a lot longer the first time, but moving forward, um, it's, it's not gonna take me as long and therefore that's where you make up your, your coin. So things like I've already spoken to him about is replacing the mulch in this particular property, um, probably in another 12 months, um, and they're aware of that. Um, but, you're proact but you're proactive with this, aren't you, with the customer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you're not sitting back waiting. You're, you're the one no. going out, we can do this, no. I can do this for you. Yep. yep. At training, when I do the Hort, I do a little feature on trailer safety and security. Yep. And I get people to give trailer stories, you know, who's had an incident with a trailer. And my hands go up and we have a talk about that. <clears throat> and I say to the guys, well, look, pay attention because chances are about a third of you are going to have an incident with your trailer and probably in the first three months because everything's so new. So everyone go, everyone's everyone got this terrific information going out with the mindset, safety first, quality of your work and your and, and relationship with your customer. So Matt set a record. I'll let you... <laughs> was it a record? <laughs> a record? I've only got your word on that, Des. <laughs> but um, I was just saying as we were packing up, I said to Joel, I learned the hard way, but make sure these are locked down and your mower cage is secure because um, as Des said, uh, invariably you'll drive off and leave the uh, ramp down and rip it off its hinges. Now, I didn't do that per se. <laughs> so, I was in my first month, I had a lone trailer from Bayswater and I was parked outside a property in Hampton and it was a very narrow street and there was a car parked on the other side and it was bin day and the Garbo was coming through the street and I thought, I'll do the right thing, I'll move for him. First and only ever time I'll move for a Garbo, especially if I'm <laughs> legally parked, you know, uh, or for anybody for that matter. So the ramp was down, I put it up, and it, was, it wasn't a system that was like this, it was an old side pin system. And I'm not sure what happened, but clearly it wasn't pinned in. So I drove off, and I was doing a, a large blocky. So I drove up, turn right, no worries, turn right again. Next thing you hear all this, this almighty bang. I was like, Shit, what is that? And I look, and then I can see in the side mirror, there's the ramp. Oh, gee, down, down the street. Two things I was very lucky about. One is that it was it was just the ramp and didn't hit a parked car. Could have easily landed on a parked car. So for a $150 fix, it could have been a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. And two, it didn't hit anybody else. You know, so um, I picked it up, threw it in the uh, in my mower cage, and finished the job, and then went to a local uh, trailer fix and did it for 150. But yeah. I think everyone's had a little bit of an incident. I know these ones here as always when they leave them up. Yeah. Or they leave them up in a jar and they hit stuff and... Touch wood, the only thing that's happened with this is it flew open um, recently. Yeah. Uh, but that was because it was a loose bolt at the end, since had that repaired. Um, and that, they've locked nut that tight, so um, that uh, that shouldn't happen again. Um, the but, mower cage ramp, there you go, make sure it's always locked up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just taking that extra Extra five time. ten seconds yeah. at the end of a job to know that you've got those um, locked in and, and, and down because the last thing you want to do is spend a day knowing that you've just cost yourself money or you've hurt somebody um, mm. and and it just the rest of your day you're not concentrating on what you should be which is getting the job done and going home safely to your family yeah just make yourself some room boys there's nothing in there that yeah. all right you don't have to uh, so you're saying obviously you got a, I didn't ask you before, you got a family, so how, do you have a wife and how many kids do you yeah, have? Yeah, so married, two kids. Yep. How uh, old are your kids? His boy's 11. Sorry, no, he's 12. Yep. 12. Uh, and daughter is 9. And they're riding in their sports? 
Yeah, so my son plays footy and cricket. Yep. Just lost the semi final, so not no. going in the granny. <laughs> no good. My daughter's um, just started netball. Okay, cool. So, yeah. But, you, but when you were uh, doing your previous job, were you able to do as much stuff with them as you were? No, nah, look, now, when I got to the rank of sergeant, most of the sergeants have got families, and you're all fighting for school holidays off, you know, so you just don't get that time. There's not much flexibility as a copper, believe it or not. So, so what do you do now in terms of your average week? Are you doing four, five? Six? No, I'll do five days a week. Yeah. Uh, won't work weekends. I've only done two Saturdays, and they were um, half-day turfing jobs to get it done for the client. Mm. Um, and I didn't mind because it was one, they were both pretty profitable, and two, um, they were learning jobs. So I did them with people that um, who had full-time jobs, but uh, as gardeners, so they could only work on a Saturday. Um, so yeah, so now I take my weekends off um, and it's just so much better, you know, I take the kid, I coached my kid in junior cricket. Oh great. So, um, although I, this, this year I've told him I won't be, because <laughs> he's been a little shit about it. <laughs> now it's more that, um, believe it or not, oh, well no, you, you would know, but it's just so busy in spring summer that trying to uh, get to cricket training on a midweek, I'd rather spend the extra couple of hours working. Yeah. How flat are, everyone obviously thinks they can get a gym's mowing guy in spring, but obviously, as we know, it's very, very impossible. So how flat out are you actually in spring? So I was surprised to see, now I didn't have my leads on in spring, yep. um, because I, I, one, it was my first spring summer, and as I said, I just wanted to know where, what my capability was, where I was, um, and, I, and I had enough clients anyway. But even when you don't have your leads on, you still get messages about unserviced leads, just in case. Um, and I was surprised to see how many unserviced leads were coming through um, in relation to people just not being able to get a gym. So if they want to get signed for spring, are they best to sort of maybe engage that person in sort of winterish, the end of winter? Or yeah, yeah, the yeah. Of... The best thing they can do is to try and just make contact now. Yeah. Um, even if it's getting them to do a job, a, a mow, um, that they don't really need done straight away but just saying all right i'll pay you for a mo now and then i've got you as potentially my guy my for spring. Spring. yeah yeah because yeah. um, look there are those guys that do take leads in spring and i will be one of those uh this spring summer um i plan to keep my leads on and that's because you want to expand your business yeah or? yeah yep. i do i want to expand my business um i know my capabilities now i know uh where i'm at and i also have um got that additional help if uh if i need it and i'm sure i will need it What's your vision for the business? Like in terms of, do you want to have like a little crew with you or do you want to have a second trail on the um, road or what do you want to do? I'd like to get a customer base of around the 150 to 175 mark. Wow. I think you'll find the guys that are keen on growing their business are the ones taking leads and the ones ringing, their client, are ringing those leads back within 30 minutes, yeah. if not sooner. Um, because it's, it's key. It, it, it doesn't give that person the opportunity then to go elsewhere. So were you a bit of a green thumb before you wanted to... Do something else? Um, green thumb in my own garden, yeah. Yep. yep. Um, and as I said, I did a, uh, 12 months as a uh, landscape labourer. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I always love getting out in the garden. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, now I've got... I'm sort of one of those people that uh, I really like to know my job. So I like to learn the intricacies of it. Um, hence why I did Cert 2. Um, and I just want to build up my knowledge about plants all that sort of you know um, thing that comes with um, gardening. So I do this, this is my territory here. Yep. So I do this property here on my right, uh, plus the one next to it and the one next to that, Yep. down that street. Um, that's a Wednesday job, so that's a tomorrow job. Uh, I've got five properties down that street, in yep. Smith Street. So talk about you know building up your, your area so it's so close so you less time in the car. Yeah, so as we were talking about, you max, you really did in the early days, you, you, you put a few off and tried to put them to other gyms and yep. get them looked after and get clients about you a lot more in your area. And yeah, that's right, yep. that's right. Used to do this property here. Uh, they've just started doing it themselves now. Yep. Um, and you find that people, for whatever reason, be it financial, retirement, what have you, they wanted you know, more time, they, they started doing their own lawns. Mm. I've got... How many have I got down else? Well, two down there. Uh, got a few down this street, but coming up here, they're actually renovating, um, which has been a 
slight pain in the uh, in the ass <laughs> to to try and get a park. But uh, so I do one. Yep. Don't do them. I do here two. Mm-hmm. And this is the place I do three. Oh wow. And I do four. So you got so many clients yeah. in this area. This yeah. little little patch you were just driven through. Yeah. And I do them all on the one day. Oh wow. Really? Wow. Yeah. So it's easy to go one, two, three, four. So I think you're telling me if obviously there's a less, few less jobs today, but um, you do like, you say you could do up to 15, 17 yeah, yeah, yep, a day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the most jobs I've done in a day, and this was with uh, with help, yep. was uh, 28. Oh, 28? Yeah. Gee whiz. Yep. And that was, what had happened was, I took two weeks off over Christmas, mm-hmm. um, and that was doing everybody leading into Christmas, and then when I got back, and I had two blokes working with me, um, and yeah, we did 28 jobs in a day. I think it was about... 70 in a week. Gee whiz. So I probably could have parked closer. Yep. But uh, the thing with this street is that once you get past there, there's no parking around the corner. Right. So then you're just fine and, you know. Lovely home here as well in, in uh, yeah, Hanson. So this is David's property. Um, so. How long have you been, David, been a client for you? Uh, since I bought the business. So. Oh, 18 months? Yeah, yep, yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, he's great. So he actually, whilst his lawn isn't fantastic, when I took over it, there was nothing there. So I've actually helped grow it back a bit. Grow, yeah, yep. there are quite a few weeds, but I am going to weed spray this next week. Yeah. So seven days after a mow des. Yep. So going to do that next week. Um, but it's a lot, lot, lot better <laughs> than, when, than what it was. when I took over yep. it. The only thing with this property is that when I took over it, there was a massive build up here of, uh, you can see the unevenness of the uh, yeah. nature. Oh, yep. So there was just a pile of mulch that the council had just tipped on. So it's it's quite grass, so it's starting to grow over, but um, I'm just scalping the hell out of it now and then, so it starts to push it down a so bit. So what scalping means, sorry, for people watching? So dropping the mower to just to try and um, take the top of the grass off. Right. Um, it'll never get even, because it'll have to be dug out, but um, it's a lot better now to mow than it was, you know, 12 months ago. Now we've got, a, now watching before, we've got a slow motion of you doing the edges. Any tips for people who want to get those nice straight edges at home watching? Yeah, right. so this is a, a straight shaft snipper. So um, I think you snip like that, don't you, Des? No, no, no. No? That's my preferred way of not to snip. Ah! <laughs> right so now. which way do you snip then, well, Matt? You yeah. show us which way well, you snip. I, I yep. snip like this. Right. Yep. I, I, I snip that way. Correct. Yep. Um, and it, I know it can be construed as a potential oh and but I also like to get on the road and snip the other way. So, um, but some guy, like, you know, for example, the car parked here, I won't, I'll snip away, but I actually find that I just like then snipping. It's more economical for me just to go do a circle. Yep. So, and hedge that way, uh, sorry, snip that way. I, I will, in my first 12 months, I spend a bit of time trying to get edges back in line with the gutter. Um, and they do sometimes take that extra 20 minutes but then for the next, however long you've got that client, it's so much quicker than just to have that line in with the gun. Or that you've already done, right? So yeah, you yeah, do, yeah. Do, do it once and then yep. so it's make it easier done. for you moving um, forward. And another guy on the course did the same thing. Yep. Um, and like they said before, you've got that, the person comes home and goes, geez, mate, mate, edges are looking good. So it's another way, yeah, you hold it up there. I've never seen that. No, well, it's yep. inefficient because you yep. don't, don't need to, oh, Matt can do this for you on camera. Yep. There's two ways to do it. You're doing it around against walls or against obstacles, so it's horizontal yep. while you're doing it. But the important thing is that you're going, you can swap between processes yeah. really, really quickly. Yep. If you're doing this, you're going to go deaf really quickly. Oh, you're right next to And the difference between this and that, you know, yeah, yeah. it's extra time. So it's, it's really simple and you get it, you get it really, really fast at it. Yes, good at so I was just saying that's that's a three week mow, so every twenty one days. Yep. And he'll go to two weeks as of today. Okay. So I'll just And email. you tell the client that and they know that yeah, and they're yeah, all yeah, prepared yeah. for that. Yeah. Majority of them are already prepped on that based on uh, previous like the previous business owner, my new clients I tell them, you know, spring summer, two weekly. Majority of that lawn is weed. Yeah. But it, Still looks good. <laughs> no, look, yeah. I'll tell you what, this, that little quick job then looks great. When Ooh. we dropped up. So for weeds getting out of control, what are you generally using it? What do I use on yeah. it? Uh, well, it depends which, what sort of lawn it is. Um, I use uh, Camber M on uh, all lawns except Buffalo. And yeah. then Buffalo, I use Buffalo Pro. But I'm gonna go to, um, I think, Javelin Des or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
example of someone who doesn't know how to prune roses. I did that job there. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't, no, you didn't. Are you doing a pruning at all? No, 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 but I'll show you, and I'll be interested to see what uh, Des's keen eye and experience uh, says on the job that I did do. Okay. Okay, that'd be good. That'd be good, actually. We get a bit of a critique. Yeah, that'd be yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, be I'll, that'd be interesting. Yeah, rate my lawn. Oh, rate my pruning. Rate yeah, my pruning. No, yeah. I'd be happy for some. Uh... <laughs> so, see, with the gym's jobs, this is what I do. I then tick, and I'll, and I'll try an invoice, and then I'll circle that, and go to 14 days now, and then I'll go home and reschedule that. Is this is how most of the blokes work. They have a run sheet there. Obviously, run down there. You've ticked your mark there. So, do you? So you... we just did David's place. Yep. So I tick that. I write invoice, so I know when I get home to invoice him. And I've got 21 days, and I'm just going to change that to 14 days. And what do you use to do an invoice? A uh, zero. You use zero, right. Yeah. So I invoice on the day I do the job. Some blokes will invoice twice a week. Okay. Some blokes will do it once a week. But you do um, it on the day you do it? I do it. Okay. Yeah, because two reasons. One, you can forget. Uh, and two, you want that money coming in as quick as you can. Yeah. And what about the um, the horticultural certificate? So you're qualified, you know, you've got the Cert 2 in horticulture. And I, know, yep. I think you can do a Cert 3. Can you cert, do a Cert, cert 3. Yep. Cert 4, I think, is when you sort of get up into the more management level style. Or right. the, the, the teaching style. So what does that course actually teach you? Tell us a little bit about that. So the Cert 2 gives you uh, some plant knowledge. So plant identification. I think there was about 30 plants that we had to identify. Um, the common name, the Latin name, um, and the family that it comes from. It's so when you rock up to a job, you pretty much you look at the garden, you know everything, or you can name everything pretty much, most of the items that are there. Well, some of the plants that we identified, none of my clients have got, but yep. yeah, there were a large amount of plants that I didn't know that I do now know what they're called, uh, which then allows me to research what their best growing conditions are, when they're best fertilised, when they're best um, pruned, if they need to be pruned. Um, are they in their optimal spot of planting, those sort of things. That's great. So that's something like a bit of knowledge you can go to the client and really demonstrate it and sort of help. And yeah, 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 100%. Um, also, I think they, you know, there was uh, some uh, irrigation, turfing, um, uh, retaining walls. Um, so things that you just would never think you might do. Turfing, absolutely. Um, I was lucky enough to uh, do my own garden, so I, I, I knew a little bit about turf. Um, but there are guys on the course, and even for me to some extent, with um, retaining walls that you'd walk away going, okay, I might have a crack at that. Whether it's in my home garden or whether it's at somebody's place, um, you know, I wouldn't have felt comfortable about that, but now I've got that. How long did it take you to roughly complete? The course? Yeah. Uh, we started in April, so it's at April, May, June, July, August. So, uh, yeah, four and a half, five months. Yeah, was that like a night a week or? Yeah, so it was yeah. a, a Monday night per week and then it was six Saturday sessions as well. Okay. So, and you also walked away with your, um, what's known as your chem certificate, so your Australian uh, chemical certificate. Um, and that just allows you the proper storage use and um, of chemicals. Now, do you think that'll allow you to build a bigger business having that knowledge to do? Yeah, so yeah. Um, saying earlier how I've got a LinkedIn page, mm -hmm. so now I'll, I'll add that certificate to my qualification, so certificate two in, in horticulture. Um, I plan to do the Cert 3, whether it be next year or the year after, um, and, and build up again. Um, and yeah, I, I think so. I think that uh, um, for the most part, people are just happy if you look after their lawn and garden, but there are those that will what qualifications do you have? Now, do you get the common, because obviously a lot of people, like, you just think, you know, Jim's mowing, whatever, and you have some people who might come and just buy a franchise and just say, I'm just going to do lawns and, you know, just punch out lawns in a day. Obviously, you're gardeners. Most most of our blokes are gardeners. So what does being a gardener sort of mean or encompass for you? Look, as people get older in life, or they, they really like their garden being looked after and maintained, um, but they also are busier as well, so they don't want to have to do it. So you've got to understand that, yeah, okay, we mow lawns, but we do so much more than that. And uh, you're right, we are gardeners and people take pride in their garden. They want to be able to show it off, especially in days like today and especially in the months that we're coming up to. So if you can show people that you are a gardener and by that looking after their plants when they need to be looked after, so pruning, their plants at the right time of the year and in the right method, looking after their roses, making sure that they've got those roses bigger and better each season, um, keeping it 
clean and weed free, um, pest and disease free on their plants, uh, offering advice as to um, what should be planted where and when and, and you know if they're going. And even the location, right, makes a, makes a difference. Absolutely. Right. Um, you know, oh, I've got an area here, what would you recommend? Having that confidence to be able to say, look, I would recommend these actually. They're a good plant, they're hardy, they, uh, they grow a good flower, they're colourful, whatever the case might be. But to be able to offer that, that advice, um, does wonders for a, for a, a client and does wonders for your business. Mm. Because, you know, you're going to make money out of that. You're going to go and source the plants. You're going to buy the plants, plant them, and you're going to build them accordingly. You know, so, but, you know, if you do a good job, people are happy to pay. There's so much more detail than what I think people just assume, which is just, you know, rock up to a, you know, let's say a mow and an edge and that's it or whatever. But um, as you said, there's so much more. Well, people ask me what I do for a living. Mm. I say, I'm a gardener, or now I'm a qualified, you know. Horticulturalist. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, right, okay. And then they might be surprised that you rock up wearing your, your gym's high vis and your, your trailer. Yeah. But they, at the same time, they just look at it and go, geez, I've got a fantastic job here. I gauged a client, I, I, I got a client um, because I do their neighbour's yard. And um, she asked me, she said, why do you think these aren't growing, these trees here? And I said, um, I said, you know, the first thing I would do, I would look at uh, your soil. I would take a sample of soil. I could have done it for her, but I actually suggested that, you know, take a sample of soil down to the nursery, get them to test the pH and uh, see what they say. A week later, I was back mowing the other... Uh, person's property and she said look you know I did that and they told me it was this she goes I want you to maintain my garden now wow she said we've yeah. had so many people just fill us full of shit and just try and you know spin us a yarn um, but you, you suggested this it turned out to be the reason and uh, you know I'll, and it was on the back of the horticulture course it was it was a, it was a few weeks before that we'd been talking about soil pH levels I know we've got a tagline saying more than just mowing, but it really is, isn't it? Oh, it's a total, total garden, total solution. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And you know what? Don't try and tell them something that you, you, you don't know. If you don't know, oh, this is interesting, what's happened here? Person's gone completely the wrong way. They've either gone the wrong way or they've had an accident. So for those who can't see, there's a car which is going down the wrong way. I don't know, I don't know if, what he's doing. I think he's just got himself maybe a bit mixed so up. So these are one of the... Uh, pitfalls of working in Brighton. <laughs> People who think... He's like, is he on the phone at the same time? I don't know what he's doing. He's got something in his hand. Yeah, I think he's... Um, yeah. So he, let's just say he's elderly and he's come around the roundabout the wrong way and... Uh, this might be a bit of strife here. Oh, I think his engine or something's conked out. <laughs> You right, mate? You okay? Uh, you need, oh, you're gonna do it here. I'm oh, just gonna uh, jump start it. Yeah. He's just gonna jump start it off that car. We're holding you up oh, too look, long. Here he is. <laughs> I was just about to ring you. <laughs> we're in we're in we're in Boxhall Street in Brighton. B O X B B O X. So for those who are watching internationally, this is. This is Just, Brighton, uh, Australia, Victoria, in Melbourne. Street. And Brighton is one of the more Street, affluent Street, suburbs. Street. It's a beautiful Street. suburb though. So Matt's clients are in this area here. He's got three jobs yep. he's gonna do right now, um, which is a great little, a he's got one, two, three in a row, which is awesome, so. Uh, we're at number two. So be down the end near St. Andrews. Okay, cheers, Des. Bye, bye. I do her hedges here, the verburnum. Oh, beautiful. Um, yep. And down here, so this is body corporate. It's another um, body body corporate job, yeah. Yep. So I do all these as well. Oh, wait, all these ones up here? Yep. Okay. Yep. So they'll need, they're creeping in from next door, so I'll have to then um, suggest doing them again pretty soon. This is where your gardening knowledge really comes in with the different types yeah. here, right? And what yep. I'm going to suggest is, see all this? So I'd suggest weed spraying all this stone work, and I'll do that. I'll take a note after we finish here, and I'll email the girl that I deal with and say, right, about time we look at weed spraying or your stone work. I may as well start on the snipper anyway.
cracking day, isn't it? It's turned out bloody. If you really... boys want to stop for lunch or anything, just tell me. No, no, we'll just work around you, mate. You do whatever you need to do normally, mate. I know Easy. you're holding up a bit, so you do whatever you want to do. I was just going to say, though, just that we didn't talk about it before, but how do you find the concept? Because the one thing I always see online, because obviously I do all the social media stuff, is you know, why I pay fees or why I make gym rich or blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? So how do you yep. find that concept of paying? Obviously, you pay a monthly fee and there's lead fees and stuff like that. So yep. how do you how do you find that? Well, the first thing is you know that going in. So if you're not prepared to accept it, then I, I don't see why you'd bother going. Um, one of the questions I got was, you know, surely you're a good networker, Matt. You could start off on your own. Hmm. There is no way in hell that I would have been as successful as I have been to date without the support of the gyms network. There's no way. Uh, and that comes down to everything from knowing how to price, quote, actually mow, believe it or not, and, um, uh, and equipment. There is, there's no way I would have been able to go out and buy a mower, a trailer, and uh, be an independent mower without that support. And that's what you pay for, as far as I'm concerned, as, as well as the, you, the brand. I mean, as I said, uh, spring, summer, how many people are ringing gyms this spring, summer versus the independent bloke with the working out of the back of the dodgy ute? Yeah, that's true. And we know that just because of the unserviced leads. But yeah. do you think that helps you with, obviously, we talked a little bit before about like with um, real estate agents and commercial clients to have that extra trust there with the brand if something happens? Oh, or? yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I do f- five properties in this street. Five? Yeah. Wow. Depending on the season, but yeah. Uh, yeah, five usually. So Joe's just around the corner, but as I said, it's a, it's a dead end street. So in the Heritage Precinct in Brighton. Yeah. So for those internationally watching, this is a very nice area in Melbourne, Australia. Yeah, where's that no standing sign just there? What I say been about reverse me trailer. <laughs> I ain't doing well, mate. I could not do it. You'd like to think Des will tell me to stop if I'm gonna bump into that Merc. Yeah, you? he's there. I think we're right. Should be fine. So I'll walk you up a couple of jobs I did because I like Des's feedback on it. Beautiful. You know that story I was telling you about the lady whose pH soil I yes. suggested? Yep. This is her. This is Vicky. Sounds like a, a really knowledgeable customer as well. So I did all this, Des. Yeah. So there are some weeds coming through, but I do hand weed. She won't mind just coming in. This, oh, nice. So this is all the dichondra. It's Lovely. starting to spread. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. So what's happened here, Matt? Can you talk about what you've done here? So this lady had a, um, uh, an existing dichondra lawn, but it got so infested with weeds that we dug it up. Um, she had new irrigation put in. Um, we put in new soil and planted 320 dichondra between here and here. And, and eventually the plan is that it'll all grow over and become another lawn. But as you can see, <laughs> it does. It is getting a few weeds through it, but um, I'm here every so often just hand pulling the weeds. How long will that take to sort of come through? Uh, it should be, I'd like to think that with the spring, it should be in the next sort of, say, four months, Des, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah the spring, summer. It yeah. would go mad. Yeah. And I do this one over here. Uh, nice clutch. So when I say I do it, they have only just had the back renovated, but we've just, I've just submitted a quote there to re, with Starthy, landscape the whole front yard. Oh, good. So this is more networking, Starthy's good landscaping. Yeah, right. so the quote here originally was just to clean out. That's all builder's rubble that they originally had said leave it there because we're going to get it re-landscaped. They paid the landscape company out the back, weren't happy with them, came to me after they saw what I did out here. Yeah, some nice bluestone crazy, crazy pavers. Yeah, so the quote was originally to clean up, rip out some of the old, put in some garden edging, dig out um, the rubble and make a, a path just to the door. I've now f- talked them into ripping out everything, putting in the edging, still leveling it out that area and edging along here, pruning the roses. Um, Total garden solution. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. All the so work. I've got a sample of the edging yeah. in my which I've got to drop off, but they're not home, but I might leave it on their doorstep before we leave. Um, it's, um, uh, I've forgotten the, the, the brand of it, but uh, um, Form Boss. I'll show you the stuff, Des, before we go. But um, so all edging, steel. And it, what it does oh, is- it rusts. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a lovely product. It's great to work with. Yeah. Too. It's beautiful. So they, they sent me it's a- expensive. 
But anyone who's listening to that, then you can hear the boys riffing on their knowledge, right? That's all the horticultural stuff. So more than just mowing, they're all gardeners. Total solution. Every one of our guys. So this is what we do here, this one, Des. But because it's so uneven, I usually cut it high just to avoid the scalp. What, you're talking six? Yeah, you probably, yeah. Um, and that one. But here are the roses, Des. I don't know if you want to have a look oh, at them. Yeah, yeah. Are these the ones you are talking about before? Yep. To get so them to critique it? These are the ones. Oh, here we go, Des. These are the ones I did uh, not long ago. Plus, I do wear lavender but when she asks. Um, so be honest, Des. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, um, the principles of standard rose pruning, first, what we're trying to achieve is a vase shape to get air into the centre of it. Then we're trying to cut out any dead or unhealthy growth. Uh, then we're going to uh, cut to a healthy outside bud. So let's start with a healthy outside bud, so that's promoting outward growth. Those cuts are at a good good height above the bud and it, that you can see it's pushing the new buds are, are coming out so that's what we want so we're gonna get that vase achieved with the vase air circulation we could have I could have potentially gone, have gone yeah. a little harder yep but uh, but that's been nitpicky you can get die back and there's a little bit of die back happening here that will die at some stage we could that could go and there's a bud coming out down here which will come out no look Matt that's a pretty good uh, again I'd be this is ultra critical I'd take that one because it's inward growing yeah but apart from that you've cut to beautiful healthy outside buds and in a month or two we're gonna have fantastic blooms it's gonna look marvelous this is where your knowledge your expertise you can be a, an absolute hero because you get results so quickly yeah yeah it's like you're fertilizing or herbiciding your so lawns. I did I sprayed them with uh, lime, sulfur, lime sulfur and they've all been fed so as well preventing disease, the lime sulphur spray, a lot of people don't do that. Do you clean your secateurs between some, not critical? No, I don't, but I should. I've got metho in there to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a score out yeah. of 10, Des. What's the score out of 10 then? Well, I'd have to give him a good eight and a half. That's good. That's all right, I'm happy oh, yeah, with that. No, it's good very, for him. Very, very good, very good work. Yeah. I mean, anyone would be happy with that to be done on their property. Yeah, so, as I said, as Des said, hopefully it comes back. <laughs> was, it, oh, no, no, that was, this, was this post your course or was this during your horticultural course? Post course. Post oh, sorry, course. well, d during. During while you're doing during. it. You're out to apply what you're learning in there and uh, take it out yeah, to the yeah, job straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very satisfying to do these and come back shortly to see them. Yeah. And I do a real lavender as well. Looks uh, great. Um, yeah, it looks really nice. I know what that one is, so I'm over that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I did learn, Des, is that lavender's only got a lifespan of around five years. Yeah, very short lived. Yeah. It's very leafy, very bushy, yeah. very ugly. You can Only five years. Underneath. It doesn't last long. Yeah. Right. So what happens after the five years? What happens then? Take them out and start again. Literally yeah. take them out and yeah. plant new ones. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Here he's got the ficus. This ficus grows rapidly. It could, and you can see it's starting to grow up the trees now. So it needs to be kept back, low, and off the trees. It's constant work. The dieties needs to be deadheaded periodically. Leaves taken out. Um, yeah, there's, there's constant work. Just so much gardening knowledge you're just saying to me now, which I don't know nothing about, which is great to hear from you because you're obviously all the expert on it. Well, I'm not an expert. I just, it's just experience. Yeah. He's a good teacher. Yeah, there's so much to learn. But the more you know, the more valuable you are, the more helpful you are. What value can you add to that customer's garden, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. And if that's your mindset, it's wonderful. So, how, so how many different things that. can you see here now? Can you just point out a spot for us? What, what we could do at the moment. Yeah. Well, that pike is definitely yep. I'd be it's about to start another growth period. Right. So I'd be getting that under control, hitting it, taking it right back, yep. taking it to the top of the trellis, take it out of the trees. The dietes, it's had its flowers from last season. All these need to be deadheaded. Well, that's new growth, but that's old growth. Yep. Uh, you'd certainly do a bit of a trim back here and tidy that up. You can box that up, square that up. Yep. The leaf mat, I'll be two minds about that. It's a good mulch. Um, it depends on what the customer wants. I see there's also been tan bark put down here as a mulch. And maybe that needs topping up again. Although it's a really business, so that's not bad. Coming into summer, I'd be checking the watering system. There's probably a watering system here. I'll be checking that to make sure it's working properly. Yep. yep. There's always something to be done. Yeah, I mean, look, um, you talk about trust. I've got uh, about 25 clients that give me keys to their properties. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, um, even so much that. Um, you know, when they're away as well, look after their place when they're away. Yep. About their bins, that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's absolutely trust because what uh, what trade do you know that you will say, come when I'm not home? You know? Yeah, none, mate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here's a key to my uh, back gate. Um, or you're coming tomorrow, I'll leave it unlocked for you, that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that's something you've got to earn it. Yeah, you've earned the trust. Oh, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, the clients yeah, yeah. and all the good work you're doing for yeah. them, all that sort of stuff. The bloke, the bloke that I thought, nah, just yeah, we won't we won't warm. We now talk about cricket, sport, you know, he's, he's, he 
really nice guy. So you can you can change, you know, what your perception of what people see about him. Mm. Um, but uh, it's, you, it's how much you want to do it. You know, some people I'm happy just to mow their lawn, get in, get out. Mm-hmm. You know, others I'm happy to spend. And I know it's time, time is money, but I'm happy to spend 10, 15 minutes chatting to a, a client, even though I know that it's going to slow me down potentially for 40 minutes in that day. But that client just might go, oh, he's, you know, trust Matt to come back and do this or whatever. Now grab a picture of, um, grab a, of Des's little socks there. I don't know, a little detail, but my Gators. people, what are they called? Gators. Gators, right. Yeah. Obviously to keep everything out on, on your shoes when you're yeah. doing your thing. Yeah. yeah. I try and brush up on my turf knowledge as much as I can, as, as well as you know the garden knowledge, because um, there's good dollars in it. Yeah. Good dollars in being able to um, go to say someone, you know, if you want your lawn looking good, let's have a let's, let's weed spray. You know, for coming into the right season. Sort of so, yeah. Turf is probably core to what we do. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. should all be experts at yeah, turf. Yeah. How did you find the training when you come down? Um, so obviously you do your three-day generic and then you do the extra three days for the mowing. If Jim keeps his emails, you will see an email after the training. Now, I've done a lot of training in my career uh, as a copper, um, and I walked away um, and sent an email to Des who sent it to Jim saying that I thought that was one of the most uh, um, beneficial training weeks that I've been to. Um, I got offered a job uh, within the government as an investigator whilst I was at the training day. I got a phone call saying, congratulations, you've been shortlisted. This is when I left the police force. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I applied um, for, this, for this job as a, an investigator within a, a government agency. And um, when I was at the training, uh, I got a phone call saying, uh, congratulations, Matthew, you've been shortlisted to the um, uh, selection panel. For, for an interview um, and uh, you know we'd like you to come along on whatever date it was and I said oh okay yep 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 and I went home and spoke to the wife and I said um, oh th- this this has happened um, and she said oh, okay well, well, what do you want to do I said actually I don't want to go back to that field I want to I want to do this business that's a pretty that's a pretty good like tough thing to say, obviously, because obviously that's a you know stable employment. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Something you sort of know, but you obviously. What day were you in the training when you sort of got that call? Uh, I reckon it was the Wednesday. Oh, okay, right in the middle. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I went home and I emailed that night, yeah. and it just so happened the guy that rang me was an ex-copper, so we had a really good chat, and then I and then I emailed him and just said, look, I'll give you a call tomorrow, and then I rang him back and said, look, I can, I didn't tell him what I was doing. I just said it's not the right time for me. He understood that, and he goes, "Just so you know, uh, the job was yours." Yeah. And I went, "Okay." So, <laughs> just um, rub it in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yep. you know, no, no looking back, no regrets. So um, the training was great, but what was really satisfying to hear and knew that I'd made the right decision was that so many people had come from so many varying industries, but all shared the same story. I was just sick of doing what I was doing, and I wanted to work for myself. And um, the more you know, I looked in the gyms, this is me and everybody speaking, the more I knew it was the right decision. Probably fair to say that mowing franchisors would meet up with their guys in the field to help them with quotes. Or yeah. Any issues. So you want to talk about that? Yeah, so you go you see your blokes regularly and do like a like a curbside or almost just sort of check up and see how they're going more, on. More on request. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, the guys' networks such a lot like Matt was saying, that they, they, they get to the point where they, they self-help, they look after each other. Yeah. Um, I'm certainly available if I need to, and some of them use me extensively for helping with quoting, and that's fine. I was just saying how much he obviously does 10 hours a week, and what he gets to that was really good to hear, but how did you, like, obviously getting your route optimised, how do you find saying no to people? Because a lot of franchises uh, might have trouble saying no, or they might have trouble increasing their rates, but how do you find optimising your business? How do you go about that? Well, for the first year, I, I didn't say no because I wanted to build, and then sometimes saying yes is more of a hindrance than saying no because you find that you, you've spent too much time at a job or you've underquoted a job. Um, and it can, it can you know, um, I, I just I think at the end of the day, you've got to know your limitations. So I, I have said, no, nah, I, I don't do that. It's not, in my, it's not what I do. Um, rather than say yes, and then walk away and spend, which has happened to a, a 
Duncan, you know, a, a, a bloke who did the course and another one of the franchisees under Des, um, he said yes to a job and um, it has turned out to be, he's had to say subsequently no because it was bigger than what it was going to be. Um, so in terms of optimising, so I, well, you've seen the route we took today. Mm. Okay, we started in Cheltenham, but we're going to finish literally two minutes from my house. So we've come this way and we've probably spent a total time, driving time, I reckon of no more than 40 minutes, I would, I would have thought, between jobs. So we've done, what, eight jobs today. We're about to hit our ninth job. I, yes, I've had Des with me helping, so that's you know obviously sped up. Um, but I would have started a bit earlier. We've, we've, we've spoken yeah, in between, yeah, sure. and it's probably not even one o'clock yet. Mm. So as I said to you, my first year, I was lucky to do nine, 10 jobs a day. I'd be comfortable now smashing out 17, 18 jobs by myself. Wow. But granted, you're going to be emptying the catcher a lot more because the grass is thicker, it's growing more, you know, that sort of thing. But I'm at a stage where I know that I can go out and do 18 jobs. Um, still feel tired, but knowing that um, I, I've worked out the best group of clients to, to do together. So let's have a chat to Des outside of that, but we see it quite often when they go, the one thing they say is, you know, oh, the quoting is always the thing where they're not. But you can't teach anybody to quote, unfortunately, yeah. because what, um, what I charge, some bloke over in the other side of the town in the western suburbs might not be able to get away with because of the demographic of the area. So I think there was a, there was a uh, I think Ben gave an example of quoting, it's hourly rate plus time plus expenses is your quote. That's all well and good, but some people, you know, I, I still underquote. I, and you know, this is the thing, you know when you get to a job and you're 10 minutes into it, whether you've quoted well or not, because you can say, geez, this is gonna take me longer than I thought. Oh, I've lost out on that. Or on the other side of the coin, you go, geez, this took, this took a lot shorter than I thought. So you think sometimes it evens itself out? Oh, it yeah. swings around about 100%. Right. So you were saying before, you don't know if you, if you couldn't, you don't think you could have done it as an independent person, which was quite interesting, because you're obviously very personable and you've got a big network. Yeah, but I, I, yeah. I, there's just no way. Who would I ring to say, uh, I've stuffed this up or, um, uh, what equipment do I do I buy? You know, um, where do you recommend I get it serviced? Or who's get, where am I starting with uh, sixty clients? You know, if you need that income coming in straight away, um, there's no way I could just put a trailer on behind a car and call it Matt's mowing and hope for the best. Mm. You just, just, you know, and then I've got to pay for advertising. I've got to get a website up. How do you think it would have gone with all the digital stuff, for example? Nah, there's no way. No way. I've got to say, Des, this is probably one of the lawns I enjoy most. Yeah. And I'll tell you why, because it is simple up and down, yeah. and I just zone out. Yeah, yeah. And I'm in my own area, and I just go up, down, up, down, up, down. And then I get in the car and go. Yeah. So, um, and it's close to home. Yes. <laughs> so, when I, know I'm, when, I, when I do it, I know I'm almost knocking off. Yeah, yeah it's a good feeling. Yeah. Hello, Hello mate. There's a dog, don't let it out. <laughs> so all this courtyard, which is, there's not much here, to be honest, I, but this was full of weeds just two weeks ago. So we weeded it all, did the maraya, and then behind you, Des, it all goes down the side as well. So we did all this. Um, so it's probably three times a year. It's a decent, like, it took two of us, uh, one and a half, one, just over, yeah, one and a half days. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, big, big mess. Because all the leaves and weeds. Oh, gee, I was saying the boys. You can do the snipper if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you want oh, gee, no, that's impossible. That's nah, really nah. hard. I just need the footage of it. No, 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 no. I don't want to. Oh. No, I'm not stuffing it up. No, no, no. <laughs> I've got no idea. Fair no, no, no. On the trigger, yep. like that, and I just uh, guide it along no. like that. Okay. So hold it like that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I'm, nah, 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 I'm just watching them laughing at me. <laughs> nah, that's, nah, that's a disgrace. That's a disgrace. I have to bloody give him a discount or something. I'll let the ex, let the pros do it. That's why you use a pro. That's why you get an expert to do it. Press in. Press in. Yep. 
and forward, just like that. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Sorry. I get you. Sorry. Whoa. Jesus. I'm really just starting to get into my own maintenance. Okay. Um, I just um, paid a hefty amount yesterday to get everything service sharpened um, before leading into spring. Um, but someone pointed out a good good thing to me that if you're only paying uh, that once a year, um, then that's a very small percentage of your, say your turnover or, or an expense, mm. you know, not even 1% um, or whatever it might work out to be to make sure that you've got equipment in good working order. But what I am going to do is um, now that I know it's been done and it was done yesterday or it was done on the weekend, let's say, um, I've set up a calendar at home, um, just my Outlook calendar. And I know that every, in, in spring, summer, probably every, what do you reckon, Des, four to six weeks, you probably need to change the oil in your mower in that sort of time. So I've set a little reminder for, to do that. So I will change the oil, I will change the blades, I will um, blow out the air filter. So what I've got at home is um, spare air filters, uh, a air compressor, um, oil, um, blades, so spark plugs. So I'll do all that myself. If you can save yourself time and money from going to the mower shop and only rely on the mower shop to get a repair if you need it, then um, you're saving yourself dollars. That's great. So, trailer's just on 12 months old or yep. just over 12 months old. This is from Bayswater Custom. Yeah, yep, one, yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have just had it serviced there. I know that now leading into spring, summer, um, that the trailer's in good working order. Bearings are done, tyres are right, uh, brakes are right, all, all that sort of stuff. Um, but every two, two to three months, I will, um, uh, what they call greasing up your nipples. Yep. <laughs> so when I got told I had to do that, uh, yeah, try, <laughs> try Googling that and see yeah. what comes up. <laughs> I actually, well, I, you know, I actually used to work at a bluestone quarry and obviously they had diamond sting blades and you actually grease up the nipples all the time. So I'm yeah. very familiar with it and with the jelly and all that sort of stuff. Yep. So, um, <laughs> I've got a grease cartridge gun at home. Yeah, great. Put and, it in there. Yeah. Yep. Just do Way it all. Um, and, uh. You know, as I said to you before, when I, uh, earlier, just learning how to change the oil at a moment, there is something satisfying with just knowing that you've done it and that you know you're going to be right for the rest of the week, month, whatever. Hey guys, so thank you very much for watching this and thank you very much to Matt Thorpe. Appreciate your honesty and all the advice and you've, you've given to us and you're 18 months into your gym's business and it'd be great to see you in another year or two and to see where you're yeah, at and, yeah, and yeah. how you're tracking along. Yeah, I, uh, with any luck, I'll have somebody else working for me and... Uh, another 50 clients but we'll see yeah so looking forward to it but uh thank you for that and if any, jim's mind we're coming up hopefully this content's released just before spring so as matt was saying before if you do one of jim's mind guy in spring don't ring up in spring get him in you know let's yeah. say now for something and yeah 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 get in early because uh worst thing you can do is leave it to the last minute so one three one five four six there's jim's mowing uh, website as well as punch into google with various uh, locations and web pages in your area and obviously Facebook give the Jim's Mowing Facebook and Jim's Group Facebook a follow and our Instagram and our Twitter as well but once again Matt appreciate you very much no, for no, us. Sure. it's appreciate really it. great insightful thank so you thank you very much guys cheers